Are you serious? <laughs> Are we muted? Oh no. Now we are. Hey everybody. <laughs> How's it going? I think we've been muted this whole time. Yeah, we were talking about a bunch of stuff, but uh, you guys unfortunately didn't get to hear us. So if you're watching on demand, you now have one minute <laughs> to skip ahead. <laughs> so I changed, I had to reinstate my drivers for my mic when all my stuff went crazy. And it knew that it was using a Yeti X, but not the right Yeti X. Like it had a like a ghost profile that it was on, so I had to change it. Good thing we realized that now. That would have been a really boring show. Yeah, well, that's what the pre-show is for. That Ironing is. out all those little glitches, you know, making sure everything's smooth. Yep. And we <laughs> said hi to you. If you're in chat talking, I promise we said hi. So we said yes. hi to Drac, to Mr. Cake Donut, to Marks, to Thorndeep. Thorndeep, you were even called Theric Spirit Animal. This my nice compliment. How much oh, I love I know. hearing his calming voice when he comes on the show. Yeah. So thorn deep. Yeah. Buddy. Mark, say we said hello to you. Jenny Fox, what's up? Phantasm. Michael, what is going on? This could be a nerdy show tonight, guys. Lots of numbers. It's nine o'clock. Um, we're going to do the music thing once we launch here. So let's go ahead and launch. And then we're going to talk a little bit about our pre-show. And then we will uh, we'll be rocking. What's up, Orsic? How are you? It's really in. Here we go. Going live. Oh, we're, we're live? We're, we're streaming right now? Cool. Awesome, man. Let me just... Uh... <laughs> All right, everybody, what is going on? We have a microphone now. You can hear us. This is the real show. So the pre-show doesn't matter anyway, right? We're good. Yeah. Yeah, doesn't matter. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about a lot of stats. But before we do, I wanted to kind of talk about something we were leading into the show with. And I did a whole expose about it, but nobody heard it except for poor Theric here, having to be the only one on earth to hear my nonsense. But I was yeah, talking. Yeah. yeah, right? So I was talking about, you guys will see a couple of changes to the um to everything going on here. You guys will see our poll on the right-hand side. If you see where it says love them, it tells you how to vote. It's exclamation point, vote love, vote indifferent, or vote hate. You can type that in the chat at any time, and that will actually throw your vote right live on there so you guys can talk about. Our question tonight is, what are your feelings on deep stats? And we'll talk about that a lot. But before we get into this topic, before we start breaking um, down everything here, um, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what we were talking about before we started. And that is that I don't consider myself a very tough guy. Um, I grew up in some rough neighborhoods. I have fought more than I would like to have fought in my life. Um, I have a losing record, I would probably say. But I'm a, I'm a son of a bitch. I, I don't stay down. Like, you can beat me to death for a really long time. You're going to get tired beating me up, essentially. Um, but, the, but for me, there are certain songs that if I listen to it, I'm pretty sure that I am invincible, that I can take on the world if as long as I listen to that song. I don't know if you guys have that song out there. But for me, I was talking about right before we started the stream tonight, I was blasting Hollywood Undead, the song Undead. I'm a big rap rock guy, right? So they're, they're I don't like all their stuff, but that song's awesome. So that song gets me all fired up. And the other one, and I would use this other one as a wrestling like entrance song. Like if, if I could become a pro wrestler, the song that would hit for me to walk down to the ring would be Static X Destroy All. I just, I love it. And then, Theric, yeah. you said you were listening to some different stuff getting hyped up too. Yeah, well, I mean, back in the day, I don't listen to it as much anymore, but I was big into, like, thrash metal back in the day. Like, when I was in high school, I had really, really long hair. Like, and I uh, I was big into Megadeth. I was big into Testament. And mm. I still, like, I still listen to them once in a while these days. Not as much, but there's a couple songs, especially Testament songs, that just, you hear it and you're like... I'm right, like I'm 21 again, and I'm we're out at the bar and we're drinking, and it's like, right. yeah, it's good. <laughs> oh man, that's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so some of the people here, we said, <laughs> Hurley Kane said, this is why I've always loved the Bard. You're right. You know, maybe that will yes. make my DPS. Yeah, right. So um, <laughs> if you guys uh, haven't been on the show before, remember you can join our Discord and jump into the Green Room Voice Channel, and that tells us that later on in the show you want to come on live to just give your opinion on anything, guys. Anything we're talking about, we're gonna be talking about ton of stuff tonight because while we're talking about deep stats tonight it's going to really encompass a huge amount of things that this game is going to offer and it's going to be all over the place so um 
I got to say, like, there's pretty much anything you want to talk about that's on this list. Come in and talk about it. Get in that green room. Drac is in there. Once again, he's always our, our loyal green room hype man and gets in here to talk to us. But please, if you want to hang out and come on the show live, that's what makes this show good. It's not just listening to minus. That's for damn sure. Um, but get in that green room. We'll bring you on the air like being on a sports talk radio show. If you don't have the discord or don't know how to get there, here you go. I'm going to put it in the chat. Um, that's how you can get in there and just jump right into that green room. That tells us you're ready to go. And we'll give you a heads up before we pull you in. So tonight, um, what you're seeing on the screen here, we're going to go through this quite a bit. Um, we're really going to talk through some stuff. I think we've figured out some cool things in here about deep stats. Now, what this is, this deep stats that you're seeing here is essentially the stats that were shown during the shaman stream. Um, we made them into a nice and neat little uh, Excel chart here. I think Janice would be proud of us um, with having our data well represented here. And we're going to go into deep stats. We're going to talk about what deep stats mean. We're going to go through some of the different things here. And then uh, from there, we will uh, bring people in from the green room to chat. And we'll be obviously looking at the, the chat in the uh, Twitch here as well. So let's get started because there's a lot to talk about. And who knows how long this show is going to go as we do. Um, chat, we're going to keep up with you guys a lot tonight. So please give your opinions as we're talking down. So let's go ahead and start, uh, Theric, in the um, like the true false status effects. I think there are some cool things here, um, but we'll go down and stop me. Honestly, if I, if I go through something too quick, just stop me and jump in if you want to talk about it. So stunned is, the, these are like, imagine a true false, like you either are or you're not. It's like on or off. You're stunned or you're not. For condition. Example. Yeah, it's like a condition. Yep. And there's some interesting things in these conditions because I think we're going to touch on um, states, which is really um, something that they brought up about like the shaman stream, like putting an enemy into a, a state. Um, and I think we're going to see a little bit of that, which is kind of neat. Um, so first we have stunned, um, pretty standard, um, rooted, mesmerized. Um, incapacitated is always funny because there's a lot of games that use the terminology incapacitated. And when I think of incapacitated, it's like like the enemy's just kind of like doing this, like <laughs> walking around the screen. and, but, and like, Or maybe it... like it's sort of similar to knocked out, right? Like, and I, I think that's one further down on the, on the list but uh, okay yeah incapacitated is uh, is an interesting one because it's sort of it's not exactly clear what that'll mean but uh see chat's yeah. going to be really important tonight because they're going to answer like instead of me doing weird things like this i'm like oh you mean drunk dazed it's almost like playing charades and they're going to answer i didn't it. know so, we yeah. had to act it out well it, <laughs> listen didn't tell me that I, when i came on the show if i don't know what i'm talking about i may have to um yeah, so, i'll do it too yeah so drunk or dazed is kind of way i see that i don't know what you guys think um, afraid seems to be a fear rating. If you look through everything that's available, it seems like afraid is, is actually the state of fleeing. I think, uh, did you gather that as well? That would be my guess. I mean, there is, there is fear, uh, abilities in the game. I didn't go through all the abilities, but one of the things I wanted to do, um, yeah. sort of in preparation for this, go through all the classes, look at all the abilities that are available and see which ones sort of lined up with these states of, uh, yeah. you know, being for NPCs, but, um, and I didn't get a chance to do that, but I'm sure that there's, there's an ability yeah. that causes fear. Yeah. And it's, I mean, yeah, there has to be, there has to be, um, asleep. Um, asl so there's a sleep and there's polymorphed, which is kind of interesting, right? So a sleep would mean, I think, um, rogues have the ability to do sleeping powder, which I believe is the AOE. Yeah. So you throw the AOE down and then it makes yourself and everyone around you sleep. Right. Yes. So um, and then here, Schlocky's getting ahead. He said, I like how we have the damage types. Yeah, there's some interesting stuff there. This first column, admittedly, probably won't be super exciting. There's a couple of things to talk about. Um, we have polymorphed, which is interesting. That's not always in every game. Cool. Yeah, yeah, I like polymorphed a lot. I mean, I uh, it always makes me think of, you know, when I, I wasn't a big WoW player, but mm -hmm. turning somebody into a sheep, right? Mm -hmm. Like that sheep polymorph spell. Um, it's so kind of iconic, right? So I always yeah. think of that. And, and I kind of think like what... And you have to remember that I think some of these states are not only things that we as players can cast or it can be put, put on, on us. the mobs, it can be put on us, right? So yeah. this is abilities that might not, they might not align with um, things or states that might not align with abilities that we have as players, but, it, you know, monsters in the world, mobs might be able to do this to us. So hopefully yeah. uh, I don't get polymorphed into a squirrel or anything like that. But it, I think of WoW immediately as well. But to be yeah. fair, before WoW, there was, um, I think there was an old Magic the Gathering card that, it's called polymorph and it was a sheep so yeah you know. um so <laughs> yeah so we have snared everyone's aware of that that's your druid's Yay. and ranger's best friend 
um, yes. disoriented. So incapacitated and disoriented, I thought, were the same thing. But they're not. Yes. Disoriented to me sounds more mental. Um, incapacitated might be a physical state of being, whereas disoriented is more of a mental state of being. Yeah, or success so, confused. Yeah. Yep. Confused. Yeah. And Schlocky thinks that uh, druids and shamans and wizards will probably have a poly or somebody there will. So I would that. imagine. Yeah. 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 Okay, so jumping down, and I, I promise you guys there's some there's more interesting things coming up, but we got to get through everything. We're going to go through as quick as we can on some of the less interesting stuff. Angry. Is that a is that a state? Well, it must be. It's got to be something. I mean, how, uh, you know, and I don't think these, I think it's important to remember, I think, that these don't align necessarily with the dispositions that mobs have, right? Like, these aren't the same as um, the alarmist or the... Mm -hmm. uh, the other ones that came from off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. the other the, these are separate. So yep. um, I don't know. I don't know what angry would um, how that what kind of effect that would have or how that would sort Phantasm of. Phantasm said angry could easily be enraged, which is actually a pretty interesting thing to say. I'm just curious if you if you can make something angry and then you have effects on them, or maybe maybe angry makes it so that they can't hit as well. Uh, maybe or, they're inaccurate. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. It's I mean, just just lowers their. Uh, well, you could go either way. It could raise their uh, mm. damage and lower their ability to hit or something like that. Who knows? Yeah. Um, we have a uh, blind, you know, rogue throwing blinding powder, um, confused, confused attacking your other people like you is what I'd guess. And then interesting enough, we have primary disarm and secondary disarm, which is neat. So if you have a disarm ability, if you use it twice, you can get rid of both weapons. I haven't seen that in a long time. That's an ODQ thing, right? Yeah, it's interesting because um, you, I mean, it, first of all, it, it tells you that, you know, um, you might, mobs can dual wield, right? There might be mobs that have two weapons and you need to disarm both of them, or um, I think it, it adds some uh, new sort of uh, uh, new uh, way of looking at the combat. If you have to take away both weapons or you have the first one, the second one, and but the first one fails, the second one is successful, that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. And it looks like we have... Um... Uh, Sacred said, doesn't the warrior have an ability that makes the NPC angry? I think they do. I do seem to remember that. And I'd imagine you would know, Sacred. So, yes, I'm going to say. Right. Um, so we have the disarms. So wet. That's a status, right? But I thought that that were a state to make somebody wet. Mm -hmm. It's interesting. It'd be, you know, we talk a lot about when we see drop a drink from the Breath of the Wild mug and being wet and hot in that game is very much an important um, state uh, that you're in. If you're wet and you get, you know, um, struck by, uh, or if you're carrying metal and you're wet, you get struck by lightning more easily. Um, you know, uh, you're cold. Um, yeah. yeah those, and that's, those... that's kind of the ones here, right? So wet, hot, I don't think burning is because burning to me just means you're taking burning damage, right? Like an yeah. enemy that hits you with a fire spell, then you have like a dot that kicks on with burning. And that, that's what that is. But, but like you just said, wet, hot, cold, um, Frozen, I think, is probably more of a state like you can freeze somebody in place. That would be my guess, like as a wizard. Yeah. A poison, yeah. same thing as a rogue. That's a status for damage. Cursed is, again, like some, you put a curse on somebody. Disease, same thing. Um, but yeah, there's actually some cleric abilities that when I saw cursed, there's uh, quite a few cleric abilities that are uh, specifically designed to uh, remove curses. So they, uh, they've obviously designed for that one. Yeah. Um, under pressure, that, that's a state, right? The yeah. wind pressure thing. Yeah, it's uh, what is the name of it? Um, can't remember off the top of my head, but um, just as a sort of a joke, when I saw this one, it made me think of that David Bowie song. <laughs> <laughs> I think whenever this state occurs, they have to play that that bass line. You have to the, sing uh, dance magic dance whenever you get <laughs> whenever you get under pressure, suffocating underwater. I think, right? Mm -hmm. Orsic Battlefield says, I think condition is better than saying state. Well, the reason I say state is because isn't that something they discussed on the shaman thing is that you can put enemies into different states? That's right. And that's right. Th so that's uh, the reason I'm saying states is because states are going to influence how different spells affect enemies. And a shaman, for example, can put you into an X state. And then you may actually have a summoner who benefits from it, which is interesting. So, um, so suffocating knocked down, obviously being on the ground. Off balance is interesting. I don't know what that would be, but it's funny because Schlocky just said off balance is definitely for rogues. Off balance is interesting. 
there's a few things here that kind of look like they could be about difficulty in hitting a target. So, and Drac Attack said uh, climbing uh, off balance mm. could have something to do with climbing, right? Makes That's a lot true. of sense. Yeah. Um, we have, let's see, I should I stay, uh, knocked out off levitating. So, levitating is going to be a thing, which is nice. Everybody loved levitating in EQ, right? <laughs> Do you remember Levitate and EQ? Man, everywhere you went, every time you went to EC Tunnels, there was always, anyway. you know, a line of mages and, and, you know, enchanters sitting on the, sitting on, not sitting on the ground, but floating above the ground. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Ronan L, thank you for the follow, or Ron Nile. Yeah, I'm bad with names, I apologize. Don't worry, I've messed up everyone's, not just yours. Um, so Levitating being in the game is pretty interesting. I don't think I've seen it on a spell list. And a lot of oh. people were wondering if that was going to be a thing um again because like you said the traveling people would just put on spirit of the wolf levitate and run through every zone stay as high as you can and float yep. through the bad parts yeah. running like three feet above the ground the whole way yeah i remember yeah. that really really well <laughs> uh fatigued i would imagine is based around some kind of long-term swimming is what i think with fatigue not yeah. sure if that'll well and they have endurance is like if we not to skip ahead but the yeah. um, ability scores endurance is is one of them right so you think about fatigue the relationship between fatigue and endurance mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, enraged. So we kind of talked about angry and enraged are two different things. So angry is probably a state. Enraged. Some levels of the same thing. Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> fleeing. So that's probably HP based if you're attacking an enemy and they're set to be able to flee. You know, our favorite enemies in the world, the ones who go when you think you have everything under control and pull the next camp on you. Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting, them. though. I mean, to have them in a state of fleeing, like you can see them fleeing, but to have it sort of, you know, uh, behind the scenes in the data, in their data, sort of saying, this is a fleeing mob. What does that mean? Like, what does yeah. that, uh, how does that affect things, right? As with all of these, but that one's particularly interesting because it might be when they're fleeing, they're more vulnerable or maybe yeah. when they're fleeing, they're more likely to do a certain other behavior. And I hope that they at least like, you know how like in some games when things run away, I hope that it actually slows down as it's lower health. So when it's fleeing, it's yeah. like slow. And then you can yeah, snare it. You snare it and it like, stops stops yeah. yeah that's a good point i i'd forgotten about that but yeah once they uh once you got them close to death they were basically moving in molasses right yeah so we got electrified seems like a state um we already said that in rage we said fleeing we said taunted obviously stealth <laughs> um invisible and, and stealth one. well invisible i've always looked at as the spell right mm -hmm. like the the magic I'm going to cast invisible on you where stealth is more the, the rogue. Yeah. And we talked about this on the, on the rewind, not too long ago about the difference between stealth and, and being invisible. Right. And mm -hmm. the, the different detection, how you can detect stealth differently than you detect invisible creatures. So it's good that they're separating these two. There's two different, there's two different states, right? It's not just a sort of generic, you know, can't see this thing or can't see this player. I'm curious too, chat, because we did talk about that on the rewind, and I was pretty adamant that I think that a rogue stealth should be way more hard to detect than a magic, like than a magic invis, because it seems like a magic invis is able to be put on anything. Like you can cast it on anybody and anything. You can buy a potion to be invisible, but being a rogue and being stealth, to me, is like a skill of the class. It's an identifier of the class. It should be better than a random spell that's not as important. Yeah, it's pretty definitive, right? Like you want it to yeah. be, you want it to be really uh, sort of the signature. One of the signature abilities. Yep. So next up we have, let me just scroll. So I have everything here for this first call. I'm almost through this one. So bleeding. I see that same as like being poisoned. Your, your mob's bleeding or you're on fire. Those are all like mm -hmm. dot statuses. Um, poisoned. Yeah. Uh, cur yeah. Intoxicated. Yes. <laughs> yes. I'm so glad that's there. Yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> everybody said yes. Um, <laughs> you got to have intoxicated. Like, do you guys remember do. being intoxicated and trying to walk around Kelethin in EQ? You just died. That was taking your life in your hands. <laughs> Walking around Kelethin to begin with was taking your life in your hands. <laughs> and then if you had a few drinks, do you remember when we were playing EQ not that long ago and, and we were all drinking? You guys got me all drunk. Your drunkenness, well, it lasted for like Forever. way longer than it was supposed to. Yeah. And we were all like, we're all sober, you know, we all normally, you're still like, yeah, no, I still can't see what I'm doing. I'm still like zooming in and out all the time. Yeah. And I watched the stream afterwards and it was hilarious to watch. It's, it was so rough. And I was drinking that day pretty heavily. It was my birthday, I think. So I was you drinking like, and the game was just making, yeah. Well, here's, here's the drunk. funny, here's the funny thing about intoxicated. I would like to see intoxicated used as an enemy effect. 
Like yes. there was there was a fight in um, World of Warcraft with the, in the Panda expansion when you were in a brewery, and uh, the uh, yeah Schlocky. By the way, sorry, I get distracted here. Schlocky, do we have a, a link to this? Yes, go on our Twitter. We just tweeted out the picture of all of this, so you can actually check it out and pull it up for yourself. Uh, Twitter.com forward slash Pantheon Plus. You should see this is one of our last few tweets. Um, so, but anyway, in that dungeon, when you were fighting the one enemy, they were throwing beer kegs at you and it made your characters drunk while you're fighting. And it was really cool. Um, I would love to see something causing the intoxicated effect when you're fighting. Yeah, cool. absolutely. I think that's a cool, cool thing <laughs> to do. Oh no, I want to make my, my, uh, my victims drunk. Yeah. Um, weakened, vulnerable, surprised is interesting because you know what came up when I thought of surprised is like when you're a rogue and you walk near something and it turns and stops and like you stop and it's just like, don't see me, don't see me. I'm wondering if that's just kind of like a, a quick on and off if you're too close to like the detection. Um, yeah. could be something like that. It, it, it could basically be not even linked just to stealth, but more along the lines of just line of sight. Right. Yeah. I don't know if, if yeah, how they're going to do line of sight kind of stuff, but, uh, if you if, you know something's looking the other way and your party's in the dungeon you walk up behind it and the first to attack you know maybe you get that status effect put on it yeah and uh, uh let's see Anuban Anuban thank you for the follow appreciate it man um so a couple interesting things because people are still kind of commenting on the rogue in viz versus stealth and there's some really good things so Cerulean says um I'd say it should be worse unless it's a supernatural stealth or if it's mundane, then maybe Invis has a penalty for moving, but stealth doesn't. And then I thought Twisted Pixels had a really good uh, answer here. And he was referring to Dark Arrow who said anyone can detect stealth, but you have to have a spell to detect Invis. Well, this this is this is great. I'm using this. Uh, Twisted Pixel, this is my new rogue defense. Um, he says Invis does not stop your footsteps, your clothing, armor, weapon from making sound or stop you from disturbing the ground. Uh, maybe you should have to level up the sneak skill as well. That's true. If you get an invisible, if I got an invisible spell cast on me, people are still going to find me. <laughs> you might not see me, but you know, I'm there. Um, so I think that personally, uh, you got, I, I think that is a great point that stealth should be better because stealth is encompassing of all the walking and the, the craft of not being found, I guess you'd say. So what do you think? I don't, I don't hear you. You muted. Oh, you're muted. I don't have you. Uh oh, we lost Theric. He's missing. All right. Um, Theric, if you can hear me, you're not activating in live. So I'm going to keep going without you, but hopefully that you can uh, jump out and jump back in or reset discord or whatever you gotta do there. Okay. So, um, let's see. Next would be in combat, out of combat, auto attacking, simple casting. You're casting your knife for interrupts. Uh, fiend so uh you know exactly what that says fiend death being uh you know in that state what's up there you back yeah can you hear me yep we got you it's weird okay. yeah um sorry about that. yeah you're good invulnerable um can't turn that's an interesting one because you know when you get mm -hmm. stunned or like when you get like you can't turn is interesting yeah i don't know uh I don't know what that that's it's hard to even figure out you know like how would <laughs> yeah. you cause that and what would it what benefit would it have I if there's know. a class that has an ability that you can put on people oh caught in a trap caught in the said. trap yeah that's a good point yeah yeah think about that spider, spider web. web yeah good call so it's kind of like a root where you can't turn that's that's actually probably perfectly what it is the, the effect of a root spell grapple you guys are smart you guys are way smarter than us um sitting see invisible perfect defense i'm imagining like that's probably like a cooldown thing but then i think that immortal and max and even maybe perfect defense these could be gm tools i think every one of these has max at the bottom my guess is that's a gm yeah. tool yeah that's what i saw too sorry guys you're not going to be able to just forward slash max It'd be unstoppable okay impose every single state on somebody yeah exactly okay so that's kind of your your on and off status effects. Those are usually cast by spells or things going on. So let's get and jump into character stats. It's a little more interesting here. So um, I don't think it, we have to go through these incredibly, but strength, no, stam, agility, and dexterity. Yeah, notice that too. Not always, not always both of those in a lot of, M in a lot of RPGs or MMOs. Usually yeah. it's one or the other, right? So my guess 
on having both would mean that agility is your offense and dexterity is your defense? Well, um, I w so what did you say? Agility is your offense? I would think agility is your defense. Oh, yeah, yeah, my bad. I think I mixed that up. Yeah, yeah, I think you yeah. had it backwards. I'm yeah, like, I definitely hmm. had it backwards. Yeah, Cerulean's like, I'd so, say the other way. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, I know that, you know, with all these primary st stats, um, we saw the racial passives. So we know that they, certain class, certain races get bonuses to each of these stats. Yeah. Um, and you look at which ones are which. I mean, they're all pretty standard stuff. We know what constitution does. We know what, um, but for the agility dexterity thing, um, you know, the, the, the elves, um, the ashen elves get, um, no, the ember elves get the bonus based on. Always uh, find a way to dexterity. talk about elves. Always find a way to talk about elves on the show. They're honestly, it's just the ones I know the best. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> I'm just trying kidding. to bring them in. I just happen to know them the best. I'm just kidding. Well, here, um, here's what's yeah. interesting, right? So think about most MMORPGs. Um, you have strength, stam, agility, intellect, and that's it. Usually, some Something like that. Here's what's interesting for a tank. So if um, agility is your defensive stat, Typically, a tank in an MMORPG is not going to grab what would normally just be agility, right? Like your agile classes would grab, and that's it. Your rogues, your rangers, your monks, stuff like that would grab agility, where and, and a tank would not, unless it was some sort of, um, I don't know, if it was some sort of like a, like a like dodging tank, like a dodging yeah. tank, like right. But what's interesting about this is if these stats are available, you can be a t like you can be a warrior. And you can go into Stam for your, you know, durability. And you obviously gonna have your block and all your mitigation. But you can also then, agility will actually hold some value to you. That you'll actually be able to build into dodge, even as a tank, possibly. Whereas if it was just a dexterity ability and that was it, or just, just agility, where it was really based on your attacking and your your overall main stat. So so it's pretty interesting that they broke those two apart. I'm, I'm, I gotta be honest, I'm very curious to see if it stays that way. It does. I hope it does because I've always thought they're, you know, what's better than getting hit is not getting hit at all. You know, if you can avoid, if you're a tank, I mean, you want to, I mean, we, we use the term tank, but that's a made up word that, you know, we as gamers have made up. It, there's no, you know, you don't go into an MMO and I'm playing a tank and it actually says tank, you know, you all have classes. So have a, have a, an absorption class that doesn't necessarily need to absorb the blows and uses agility, I think is a pretty cool idea. So, so, so I mean, here's you know, my, here's my problem with that. And I've played a healer and I've uh, I've healed some agility tanks or dodge tanks. There's a big difference between what you're saying is 100 percent true. If I dodge an attack, it's better than taking the attack. Perfect. But when you don't dodge that attack and you take yeah, full damage <laughs> versus the other guy taking 50 percent damage, I can't heal that. So that's a glass. That's a glass half empty way of looking at a mine, as I have to say. <laughs> oh, man. Dodge tanks were great until they got smacked. So. Yeah, um, I know. I can, I can, I can agree with that. Pretty interesting, but it's it's interesting because then then you have another one. Um, you have constitution, you have stamina. So True, those yeah. those two are sort of close. Now, I think if you dig deep into D and D, there's quite a difference between them. But I think as far as how games in this genre have portrayed it, they've been pretty close. So it's it's very interesting to me that you have these two sets of base stats in in drac you might be 100 percent right um he's saying maybe say. stam is for climbing and jumping and endurance and then constitution endurance is the thing right yeah, yeah. so endurance I'm, i wouldn't be surprised if the stamina uh stat is tied to your endurance right because you've got health mana and endurance yeah that is actually pretty interesting and then wisdom and intellect i've always thought were completely different things wisdom to me is the Oh, how would I put this? Cleric, shaman, wise <laughs> intellect is your your wild spellcasters. Like intellect would be, you know, like uh, a necromancer, a wizard, a summoner. Yeah. So that those two being in there have always been that way. And then you have charisma, which I love. There's so many games that drop charisma, so much. Yeah. So yeah, charisma is a charisma is a bit of a throwback stat. Yeah, and it's fun, especially mm -hmm. you know um, now that we have the. You know, now that we have classes like the Enchanter um, and the Bard, uh, Charisma is probably going to be pretty important for like their mezzing and charming and stuff like that, which is pretty neat. Yeah. Or just folding with, um, you know, the illusions that they can do. So I, I really like that as well. So, 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like then, that too. Then you have armor, of course. So I'll just read the resistances all at once. Um, I don't think anything stands out here except for one. So you have magic, fire, cold, poison, disease, shock, curse, divine, chemical, nature. Chemical. Yeah, I'm just gonna say I was. I think it was chemical. You're gonna say it was the one that stands out. It definitely does, and it um, it goes. It's the rogue um, abilities to create mm -hmm. uh, alchemical um, stuff. So like not not only poisons, um, but there are a lot of other abilities that the rogue has that are chemically. Um, sort of aligned, I guess you would say. So, uh, you know, those resistances are going to be important um, for the uh, enemies of the rogue. Yep. yep. Um, and then they've said, I think, in the shaman stream that the only two people that can deal with chemical resistance is the rogue and the shaman. If I'm not mistaken. I didn't remember that. Yeah. Um, health, mana, endurance, awareness. Awareness is an interesting stat to detect stealth. Yeah, um, and um, some of the other ones, I think later there's other uh, stats that we're going to see in a bit that deal with the perception system. I don't think awareness is one of them, but um, it does sort of go to that, you know, it, it could be related to the perception system in some way. Yeah, and somebody here just said that maybe it has something to do with like traps and stuff. There's some other things that look like it might have to do with traps. So I'm, I'm actually kind of interested to see how that plays out. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, concealment. So I guess that's going to tie into stealth. It has to, right? Or, well, or it could be um, something to do with the acclimation system, um, weather effects perhaps, where you're mm -hmm. just not able to, um, you're concealed by the by the weather condition in the area or something like that. Yeah, yeah Twisted Pixel, same thing. D&D, &D, uh, he says, as a passive perception is a skill tied to your wisdom stat. Awareness might be something. It's true. Um, Attack power, spell power, uh, physical crit, spell crit, separated. Um, WoW did this for a little bit of time, and then they put it all into one stat. So you actually have it, the difference between a physical or a spell, um, physical or spell crit, which is interesting to me. So. Hit percentage. Pretty standard. Yeah, hit. I love that hits in there. A lot of games got away from hit. Um, which is a pain in the butt because you always have to make sure you get a certain amount of hit to fight certain bosses. But it's a really cool check and balance that's not just the DPS race. Like, get your hit to this percent. If you're going to fight mobs that are higher than you, right? Um, I mean, all yeah. the DPS in the world doesn't make any difference. Yeah. Uh, dodge, parry, uh, dodge rating. So so then you have, so you have hit percentage and hit rating, um, which is fine. You'll gain hit rating. It'll have diminishing returns. It's how these are all going to work here. Uh, dodge rating, block rating, parry rating. Um, you do have the health regen per second. That's kind of fallen out of games too. Yeah, yeah. Well, and and that goes with the meditating thing, right? So a lot of games, because a lot of the modern MMOs are so, you just get your stuff back. As soon as you're out of combat, everything regenerates just like that, right? Mm -hmm. So health regen per second, mana regen per second. Um, again, throwbacks to the old days when we actually cared about that kind of stuff. And you had to take time to do that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting because, um, you know, some of the, the us EQ fans that got into Pantheon, um, I mean, some of the most well-known items were your, you know, fungi tunic, yeah. your um, Ixar ceremonial breastplate and stuff like that. So yeah. clarity. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So having that back is neat. Um, you didn't really, you had spells in WoW where you would cast and then all of a sudden, like you'd have a free casting period or, You'd burst everyone like extra mana or something like that, but you never really had that mana regen per second in um, in WoW. You have cooldown reduction, um, and you have haste, which is interesting. A lot of games, your haste rating plays into your global cooldown, which plays into your cooldown reduction. In a lot of games, those are two separate stats in here. I think uh, cooldown reduction is really interesting. Um... You know, I, I can't think of another MMO I've played necessarily. Maybe I'm just not seeing them, but where you could actually affect um, another player's cooldown reduction, um, you know, how quickly their abilities, you know, uh, went through their cooldown period. Um, it could This could be a really um, sort of important uh, yeah. uh, statistic or ability to affect that really is desirable in, in Pantheon, I think. Dark Arrow just hit the nail on the head. Diablo 3, huge. Um, I played right. a... Uh... 
was a barbarian or warrior, whatever they're called. Um, the barb, you could get into that form where you turn into the giant form of yourself. Um, and you could set a build up where as soon as it came off cooldown, it was back because you had enough cooldown reduction and you had it reduced in other things. So you could stay in like the state or it might've been the crusader actually now that I think about it. But, but if you got to a certain level of cooldown reduction, you could literally stay in your ultimate form. So you would really go for that pretty heavily in Diablo three. It was a great bring up dark arrow. Um, and then readiness. Yeah. What's readiness? I am wondering if you get snuck up on, um, you in the combat isn't started by you, but started by the enemy. If you take a bit of like a, like a reduction at the beginning of the fight that that's been done in a lot of single player MMORPGs or RPGs. I'm sorry, where, you know, you get flanked, you're at a disadvantage at first. I'm wondering if just readiness is, if you're not, if you get attacked before you're like from behind or you don't see an attack coming or from a stealth mob, you're yeah. out of like readiness or whatever that is, but that's kind of right. Yeah. It makes me think of like, um, the, like the RPGs when you get that, yeah. you know, bonus your first attack you get an extra round basically a free round of attack before the enemy before your the real battle starts sort of thing so yep and guys make sure to vote in the poll as you just saw shade stomp put uh, exclamation point vote love um if you look at the um on the right side of the screen it tells you right next to it how to vote you'll see it in the parentheses you can vote love vote indifferent or vote hate um so tell us what you guys think of deep stats and if it's important to you so now we're getting into some of the big stuff here, and there are going to be some big talking points. Um, so let's let's get through it. There's there's a lot here. Um, so let's do it in bunches, if you don't mind. First, let's go into defense. Nothing to talk about there. I don't think defense damage reduction, the ability to be crit. I think when you hit a certain level of defense, you can't be crit anymore in some games. Love all that. Whatever. I hope to keep that same. Let's talk about the weapons. I'm going to do this in a very large section here. One-handed and two-handed swords. One-handed and two-handed blunt. One-handed and two-handed piercing. One-handed edged. Two-handed edged. One-handed axe. Two-handed axe. Hand-to-hand. -hand. Yeah. Interesting. Well, the two-handed piercing. So like a, a, a spear, right? Like a trident for the dark yeah. yeah. So, and it's so funny. Drax said exactly the same thing. As you he says he loves the two handed piercing. That's great. Um, so here's what's interesting about this axes have their own category, and then you have edged, and then you have swords. So it's it's very interesting because if you think about it, is an axe is an edged weapon. So all I can think of like as an edged weapon is like a staff that has blades on both sides and you can like spin it around and stuff. Or like a yeah. pole arm, like a pole arm yeah. might be an edged weapon. Actually, you know what makes me think of that? There was a, um, I think you saw it too, but like there was a question put out by uh, VR on their Twitter about your favorite drops. What were your favorite drops? And um, I was I was remembering mine, and I've mentioned this before, but one of my favorite drops in EQ was a weapon called a color, which was from the Plane of Hate. And it was basically just like a long staff with a blade on the end. So something like that, right? Yeah. And then um, Orsic just said, what about like a scythe or a sickle? Scythe, yeah. Yeah. Good but point. then like, so so here's what's interesting, because you, you have swords and axes are broken out. And then we know that halflings have plus to daggers. There's not a dagger stack on here. Oh, yeah. Well, look at that. Huh. Now, now, let's keep in mind, this is early. Not every stat might be in there, but I, it's really shocking to me they wouldn't have dagger in here yet. So when a halfling has the ability to have plus to daggers, is that going to be one-handed pierce is what that's going to be? And they just threw it into... It has to be pierced. Somebody said it could be edge. It has to be pierced. Because if you're backstabbing, you're piercing. It, it has to be. Daggers have to be piercing. But it's interesting. Like So Drak just said maybe there's a substat of dagger. It's, it's interesting because, Theric, I'll, I'll pose this question to you and I'll pose it to the chat here. Do you like the more generic things? Like, would you rather it be like one-handed, two-handed slashing, one-handed, two-handed blunt? You know, because what's interesting here is like, think about blunt, for example. You have hammers, you have maces, you have like all these different types of things that are under blunt, but yet you have one-handed, two-handed sword. Um, you have one-handed, two-handed axe. So there's a weird... There's some kind of a weird formula here where certain things are specific and certain things aren't. And we know that there's a dagger stat or something. Um, but here's the other thing. Do you, I would almost prefer not to have dagger and, and all these different items because 
if they want to add weapons in the future, the worst thing in the world could be that they add a new weapon type and you have to start at zero to train it. Yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. like, what are your it's thoughts just be, looking at this? Yeah, it's got to be something like that. Um, I'm. It should probably be pretty general. I think unless you have a class that's like defined by a certain weapon. So I don't know. You know, I wonder about axes. You know, why that wouldn't just fall into uh, you know edge weapons as a category, but. It makes me think that maybe there's some sort of um, really specific uh, class that has a connection to the axe, for example. Yeah. But um, you don't want to go too specific for all the reasons that you said. And uh, um, just keep it general, I think, is probably the right way to go, at least for now. And, you know, maybe they can add that in later. Or if there's something, you know, some sort of epic weapon that's unique in its type, who knows? Something yeah. like that. Yeah. So next up we have, let's see here, we have Throne Archery Ranged. So shurikens, throwing daggers, archery is obviously arrows. Oh, What's yeah. ranged? Well, so ranged would be anything like spears or maybe like any any other. Um, I, yeah, I don't know. I guess it would go into the throne. That would go into throne weapons range. <laughs> Dark arrow says boulders. Boulders. <laughs> throwing the uh, throwing the halfling at the enemy. Maybe uh, that's what's, uh, going on there. Well, you better get your ra- You better get thrown <laughs> up. Throw me, <laughs> throw me into throwing. battle. I'll come through the air with my daggers. Or, I'm sorry, my one-handed piercing weapons. That's right. Um, that's right. Be clear. Okay, so the next one we're going to go into here, this is another reason of the many that I love Theric. So this is an interesting thing that we saw. I'm sure when you guys saw these before, it was uh, interesting. Um, we have a section of weapons, and we're going to see this again. If you look right beside where we're at here, I highlighted those. You'll see the planar weapons, right? Then we actually have another set of planar items right beside it. So if you guys yeah. see pretty much right next to it, I didn't even plan that. That's awesome. We have planar items. And I'm thinking, oh, man, what are planar items? And Schlocky, you actually were where I was thinking, right? So Schlocky's like planar, endgame weapon types, no doubt. Not possibly. So Theric, I'm going to hand this over to you because I said to Theric, I'm like, Theric, look through some of this stuff. See if you can find anything. And... uh I think he uncovered this is breaking. And if, so if here, <laughs> this is a breaking theory right here, breaking speculation is what yeah. it is. Yeah. Yeah. So as so I looked into it, I, I was like, hmm, you know, where would I, how could I find something to link planar weapons to, you know, what could this be about? Right. So I started thinking about, um, you know, the different classes and I started looking at the class descriptions. And, um, you know, if you go to the summoner class page, I'm going to read you what it says about the summoner class page. It says, quote, it's a curious thing to reach a hand into realities other than your own. This is the art of the summoner, whose hand then brings forth all manner of things that did not exist only moments before. The summoner's command of arcane conjuration is unrivaled, able to bring forth sustenance, tools, barricades, weaponry, and even fantastic creatures of incredible strength and ability, all of this at their whim. And then it says the mana plane is home to near sentient entities of pure arcane energy known as mana ghosts. And then later on, it talks about so like the defining feature of the uh, summoner is their archimental, right? Their, their pet. It says archimentals are capable of using special armor and weapons that the summoner create. These weapons improve the archimental's effectiveness in various ways by improving its unique abilities, power, energy, uh, solidity, and quickness. And the one of the uh, spells available to the summoner is summon archiment, archimental weaponry. It says you're able to summon weaponry, weaponry that is specifically designed for your archimentals to use in combat. As you grow in power, the variety and potency of this weapon weaponry will increase. So if I had to guess, I'd say that this is the weapons that are being summoned by the uh, summoner for their archimental. Yeah. And I've, I, once you said that, I mean, if we think about it. So first of all, amazing lineup and discovery there for that. Um the, the the cool part is is they've talked a lot about that the the pet that you have is going to be like another character. So we haven't seen a lot on the summoner, but the things they've talked about is like if you have like you're gonna have to level up your summon your pet, you're gonna have to improve its abilities. You're gonna everything you would do for your player, you're going to do for your pet because if you put gear on it when you summon it, it comes up with that gear that you have. So it's actually really interesting to see that they have to level their weapons the same way we do. And that would make perfect sense if they're saying that it's going to be just like your character, right? So yeah, this really makes me want to play a summoner. <laughs> I read this and I was like, oh man, like I've looked at the class pages, you know, briefly and not all as, as much as some of the others. But when I started reading through this, I was like, oh man, that's super cool, you know? And yeah. and now you've got like a specific statistic for each type of weapon that you're, you're equipping your, your Archimental with is, yeah. is uh, really interesting. 
Yeah, I thought that was, I mean, honestly, man, I think you broke that. I'm standing by that for now. Until Joppa comes in and goes, no, guys, it's just a weapon from the plane. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll stand by it exactly <laughs> until until Joppa <laughs> tells us we're out of our minds. And yeah. we need to stop thinking about these things so much. So Yeah, yeah. So um, let's go ahead and jump ahead here. So we have awareness and combat awareness. So that kind of ties right back to that readiness. And uh, there's also an awareness. Other So this awareness word has, is actually in both the character stats and ability stats. So I, we kind of talked about before, not 100% sure what that's going to be. Um, it, it's interesting. It's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It, yeah, it's hard to say. Yeah. Detection. You know, um, I think so. We talked a little bit about how awareness for a rogue might be getting traps, but then we have detection as its own ability. Um, mm -hmm. And this is where it gets like when you have all these different stats, it's very interesting to see how they plan these abilities, because my guess is detection would be based around detecting stealth enemies around you um and detecting like hidden traps i would think um so interesting there um yeah, perception some overlap yeah perception we know what that is <laughs> yes yes perception is yeah. but perception is also made up of two uh two skills two separate skills as well from what they what we know about the perception system there's the investigate and the other one which i can't remember off the top of my head at the moment but investigate is something else insight and investigate thank you very much yeah. um so yeah and i think i do think um i don't know if they're on the list i yes they are i see them actually i looked at it earlier and, and was wondering if they're there but so they are on the list so this awareness is something different and perception as a skill or a, a stat in and of itself is is something different so so here's another really interesting thing. We jump now into well, concealments there again. We talked about that before. So that's going to really tie across different things, it looks like. So uh, in chat, um, Drac Attack just said three different stats for shields. Wow. Yeah, that's what's interesting. And, and it's pretty easy to understand. So shield block is going to be the amount that you can block. That's typically how that works. So like if you can block 15, you know, 1500 damage, that's your shield block rating. Shield proficiency is probably your ability to use it, similar to your ability to use a weapon. And mastery is probably the like a shield, or maybe shield proficiency is like your block percent, your chance to block. So you, you have an amount to block, chance to block, and probably like a usage, like you would with your weapons, like your 10 out of 10 in weapons or something like that. Well, proficiency, if we're, you know, if we're thinking like from D&D &D terms, proficiency is just the ability to use a type of thing right mm. so if you're proficient in light armor medium armor heavy armor that's true um, you take penalties for using ones that you're not proficient in so maybe if it's a shield thing maybe you're good at using heavy shield but not like light buckler type shields you know yeah that's very possible and then chi blocking that's going to be your off tanking monk monks use chi yes. so that's so it's interesting so your chi ability is going to be used for blocking um when you're off tanking which is it's pretty interesting there yeah. You know what's one of the thing about the the chi that you mentioned it um one of the combat resources which we'll talk about a bit is knowledge it is a uh, chakra which is mm. which is the monk resource so i'm thinking maybe this chi is what um maybe that's what chakra is now maybe they've changed it who knows yeah it is really interesting i'm not sure on that but i know it's definitely monk and we can actually show that a little bit later too um yeah. counter spells um fiend death easy parry dodge block um, you don't always, I say this word, I, I have said this word incorrect my entire life. And do you know how, when you say something wrong, you know, the right answer, but then you don't remember which one was the right answer. You keep um, saying it wrong. Riposte. Rip, rip, it's just riposte. My That's son, it? my son is a fencer. So Perry and riposte. Okay. So riposte. I might be saying it wrong. Who knows? I'm maybe if I am, who knows? So but. riposte has to be a monk ability. It has to be. Yes. Because I can't imagine any other tank reposting. Because reposting is essentially, you know, you get hit, you hit right back. I can't imagine a warrior paladin, maybe a dark dire mirror, or dire mirror, dire lord, maybe a dire lord. Um, it's so actually, Sterling said it's a, it's a warrior thing. So maybe warriors can. I don't remember seeing that. Oh, well, that is. And yeah, and like I said about fencing. So I mean, it's a, it's a it's a True. weapon thing. So it is basically like my understanding of what it is is it's an instant counterattack. It's like, mm -hmm. you know, your your opponent attacks, you instantly counterattack it in some way with your weapon. And Hoye says it's typically off of a parry, so that would make more sense then with what you're saying. The yeah. the you know what it is for me? I'm a big Final Fantasy Tactics fan, and that was like one of the best monk abilities ever. Like you just throw yeah. that on every character. You take like a sub and monk just so you can have that and just wreck everybody. 
Um, be cool if rogues could do it. That would be really cool. I would take that. Um, disarm, which we talked about earlier. No clue on this next one. None. No clue. Rescue. Yeah, what is that? I marked that down too. I actually wrote down, hmm, that's interesting. <laughs> what is rescue? Is that I like have... if somebody's drowning, you <laughs> your ability to pull them out? Who knows? I, it's CPR. CPR. <laughs> um, maybe, and maybe players can be in a down state. I think Phantasm just actually said it. Maybe you can be in a down state where you're not quite dead and you can recover them. Maybe that's a rescue. It's that intercept. It's kind of cool. Hmm. Intercept's not bad. I will tell you, in every MMO I've ever played, Intercept is too much for me to think about as a tank. Like, if you're getting hit, stop. I'll use Taunt instead. I never, I have never put Intercept on my bar in any game. Any game ever. Nobody got time for that. Um, Just play DPS, that's all I do. <laughs> yeah, I misspelled safe fail. So that's not safe fail. That doesn't have anything safe to do with fail. fair fail. Um, dual wield safe fall. Here's what makes me really happy. You ready for this? And you, this can go either way. If you look, sometimes the abilities are grouped. So you have that's true. Dual wield, rogue dual wield, safe fall hide, sneak, rogue safe fall confirmed. Eh? Please, I don't, I don't know, care. Monks, man. monks don't need safe fall. Rogues do. Has to Everybody be. needs safe fall. Yeah, let me fix this so I don't look like such a tool. There we go. <laughs> safe fall. Um, safe fail is pretty funny. Safe fail isn't bad. Um, it's got to be rogue. Rogues have to have it. I'm calling it now. Yeah, you got it. Rogue, rogue with safe fall built in. Especially with all the climbing they're gonna do, they're gonna be better at climbing. We've heard you got the ropes. That, yeah, rogue. Uh, hide sneak. Style of rogue play needs safe fall. Yeah, could also mean druids. Yeah, but everything around is the only person you could argue that maybe that would be for if if you're looking at this list. If that means anything, is a monk because dual wield. And safe fall. But then once you go hide, sneak, pickpocket, sense traps, disarm traps, that is all rogue. Yeah. Well, we know actually, um, if you remember the uh, stream from a couple of years ago, the Tower of the Reckless Magician, it showed them uh, jumping out of the, uh, there was a part in the very beginning where they all jumped out of the window of the tower, right? To see if they're safe fall. I mean, they had GM tools going, so yeah, yeah, it yeah. wasn't a good representation, but uh, I think he, uh, he was playing a monk and he did have safe fall, so. Drac Attack says, I think those were all ranger skills, not rogue ones. And Stands and Fire <laughs> says the rogue bias is showing. <laughs> Drac, you're the best, man. <laughs> um, so then we get into some warrior abilities, possibly paladin, um, kick, bash, slam, heave. Heave. <laughs> heave is interesting. Yeah, That's where you can throw a halfling if you can heave that's, them. Yeah, that's what made me think of, well, if you throw halflings, you heave dwarves. Maybe that's what it is. <laughs> um backstab so look we're still in you know kick can be a bash is not rogue but kick can be so heave backstabs obviously rogue veiled strike obviously a rogue um shoulder crash is warrior we know about that shoulder crash is the one that allows you to break through walls kool-aid man ability yeah that is the coolest ability if you guys aren't familiar with this the warrior actually has an ability to break through barriers and depending on your level, you may not be able to break through it when you're low level. So you come back later and you can break through a wall and it's a whole new area. Freaking cool. I don't know how you handle it in an open world game. Like you just stand there and wait for a high level warrior to come by, break open the door and you guys can all walk through. Like when does it come back? When does it respawn? Um, oh, it says here, um, cool, heave though. for two-handed weapon DPS. Just take an act, two-handed axe and just heave it. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Um, all right, what do we got next? Stun pull weapons so that's another interest so now we go into these different weapons is a pull weapon a pull arm or an actual pull how did you read that yeah i i did take it as like a pull arm so like um maybe it's actually like a metal pull for a monk maybe maybe like a pole vault <laughs> but this, this is what's really weird to me right so we have these we, we talked about it when we talked about the weapons with the sword blunt piercing edged axe it's like okay well what falls into what then you get a little specific pull weapon staves um short bow long bow crossbow quarter staff long staff yeah. like i They're don't know cool. it's cool like but what's there's no dagger but we have pull weapons 
I don't know. They got something up their sleeves. I mean, they something. They've got this figured out. And somebody said earlier in chat that you know this is obviously just a list that will probably be edited oh, over yeah. time. You know, and they'll probably be added to it too. Yeah, there'll right. be a lot added to it too. So there's some. So shields and tombs, tomes. tomes. I say like, I say that wrong. My guild used to harass yeah. me so bad because I say tomb and tome wrong. And be <laughs> like, hey guys, can you give me a tomb? <laughs> like, what you want to die? Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> We've got one lined up for you already. Don't worry. <laughs> oh, yeah, thanks. Um, shields and tomes. Tomes are for clerics, right? Mm -hmm. Use this. Yes. Um, then we already talked about the planar weapon, so we'll skip by that. So then we have this is interesting. So you have proficiency. So arms proficiency, armor proficiency, and it comes with a mastery as well. Um, archery. This is doubled up right here, so we'll get rid of that. Um, so you have archery proficiency, archery mastery. So that's interesting. So arms has to be weapons, armor's gear, um, archery is ranged bow weapons, and then martial arts is monk, I would take it. Right? Right. So, yeah, yeah. Um, I love it here. Uh Twisted Pixel says super jacked arms. One arm. One big arm. That's where you carry your two hander with one hand and your other hand's also take my strong hand. Um Tac this is an in tactics recognition. Is that gonna be around disposition? Um possibly. It makes me think of a warrior. Um it makes me think of the warrior skills with regard to their mm. banners and their tactics and that the, they have a lot of skills that um speak about about tactics. Giving you could be right. It, it could be recognition of dispositions as well. That would make sense. Spell identification. That's cool. I love spell identification in games. I'm, it makes me always makes me think of uh, the old, uh, like Baldur's Gate and stuff like that. Um, stuff that used the D and D, like the 3.5. Um, I think Will said um, spell identification was always pretty big in that. And uh, well, here's what's interesting about that. Like, how does it play into having a stat that you level up? Well, if you see a lot of spells over time, I mean, you get better and better at um, recognizing them, or maybe just. You know, you get you can tell your group what spell was just cast because it wasn't. That's like what you. I was going to ask. You so, saw the effect, but you, you didn't know. You know, like when you was. go to interrupt something and you see a cast bar and it usually says the name of what they're casting. If your spell identification is low, can you not tell what they're casting? Because if that's a mechanic in the game, that is brutal. Could you imagine well, if there was like a die, like like a spell, like you we have to interrupt when this guy casts X, but not everybody can see it? That would be nuts. So I don't know. I think that was like that in EQ and maybe I'm wrong, but maybe chat knows if, but I remember seeing an EQ, maybe this is from Miss Memory or whatever, but it would say the mob casts an unknown spell, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then, um, I mean, I, I never played a caster class, so I never really had a level, I, you know, spell identif identification get better over time. But I think that some classes could, uh, that wouldn't say that for them. It would say the, you know, mob With casts haste. Yeah. So how, if that is the case, that's a huge challenge. That is a, for, for a WoW player, that is a massive change. Because think about it, the rogue is usually going to be the one up there interrupting or the tank. So you're going to, as a caster, you now have a really important ability in the back to call out interruptible spells. And I really like that. I think yeah. that, I don't know that the guys, again, we're, we're theory crafting here, but if that's what that is, that's super cool. Super cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's another one of those things about, you know, just paying attention to the world around you. And, and you mm -hmm. know, Pantheon's gone very hard on this idea of paying attention to your surroundings, pay att paying attention to the to what's going on and, and seeing things. And, and spell identification is, is fits right into that. Yeah. Yeah. And Phantasm said that would make voice chat mandatory. No, you can macro stuff. Um, yeah. You can macro it, I imagine. Um, and guys, we are going to get the green room. We have Drac, Hoye, and Old War Goat in there. And if you want to jump in, jump in. It looks like we have a lot more. We actually don't. So we're in pretty good shape here. We have a couple more things to talk about. But now we get into the spell casting types. Now, I don't remember all of them from EQ, but some of these are the same. Alteration was. Uh, fortification is interesting. That's like, uh, does that have to do with buffs or yeah. um, protection spells? Yeah. Like, or um, resistance, maybe not resistance. Uh, improvements of some sort uh somebody said health buffing manifestation that's new that immediately i think of evocation but that's on there as well 
Right. So manifestation would be something more like along the lines of the summoner, right? And being able to manifest items into the world. Um, it could even be something along the lines of, uh, you know, uh, rangers have a foraging skill where they gather things up. You know, is that part of their, that, that probably is a separate skill, but you're manifesting yeah. something. Actually, the chat just corrected me. It wasn't evocation, it was conjuration. And there is no conjuration. So that's probably what it is. But so you have materialization and manifestation. Would materialization be the item and then con the manifestation would be the creature? Yeah, maybe. maybe. So like a necromancer would have manifestation. Um, sure. A summoner yeah, would have a good manif- example. Yeah. And, and that would make sense too because can't you just um, – can't you just like summon a random creature from anywhere in the world as a summoner? <laughs> just like comes and can kill everybody? Like I think that's an ability. It's like the best thing ever. Um, so that's interesting. Um, evocation, um, expulsion, removal, um, invocation. What's the difference in yeah. evocation and invocation? Cause I think they were both in EQ, right? Um, good question. Chat, I don't know. That might be for you. Yeah. So invocation makes me think of, um, fire specifically. I don't know why maybe I'm wrong, but, uh, evocation is, is, has always been the destructive magics of some sort. Oh. Interesting. Consecration is holy. And imagine. Yeah, like turning undead and that kind of stuff. Yeah, illumination, light. Uh, distortion is probably some sort of like illusionary. I would think so, yeah. Channeling. It could be anything. Um, vision. Channeling usually, yeah, channeling was always associated with um, um, the uh, enchanters, I think, and, and more along the lines of like the support type magic. Okay. And then vision, that's the shaman one, right? Yes. Vision is the shaman resource. Yeah. So shaman, as they, if you aren't familiar, you guys haven't seen any stream, shaman are able to, as they cast, they get quicker at casting. They gain vision and they can cast faster um, as they continuously cast healing spells, for example. So um, swimming, tracking, that's all you. Ranger tracking, find enemies. Um, Climate resistance, climate travel. That's interesting because that's sort of, you know, we know about glyphs, right? Mm-hmm. We know about being able to deal with the different climate conditions um, and climate travel. I have no idea what climate <laughs> travel is. I Maybe mean, like, yeah. Acclimation. Climate travel is weird. Everybody says, yeah. Mm-hmm. It's really weird. There's, It's not the weirdest one on the list. There's another one that's even weirder than this, but yeah, we'll get to that. Encumbrance, but, we all know what that is, especially with all the coin weight talk. We'll <laughs> skip that for now. Yeah. Um, so we are Got getting towards encumbrance the... talk for a while. Ugh, you and me both. Riding, fair, um, mm-hmm. which does mean we'll probably get various types of mounts. So I think we might be able to say that we have faster mounts. I know some people are like, oh, don't make them super fast. But if I see riding, I have to think there's faster mounts, right? Yeah. yeah there's I mean, no riding otherwise. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Taunt, we know that one. Meditate, simple. Fletching. Yay, fletching. So here's what's interesting. For those that didn't watch last week, if you're into crafting, we did a really long discussion on crafting, and we did it with uh, Nafel, who is a genius. It was a, I'm not into crafting. That's why I wanted to get someone who is like Nafel. It was super educational. I had a super fun time. We, we got into so many details. It looks it was like show. It, was, it, was, it was so it was interesting. It was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. The The interesting thing is, is that we had a list of crafting things that have been confirmed. This document actually confirms either specializations or different, um, either specializations within professions or professions that weren't listed. So it's kind of interesting. So fletching is one of them. Um, we assumed that fletching would be part of woodworking and it is either a part of it or it's its own thing. So I don't know. What, how do you feel when you saw that? Well, um, rangers do have the ability to coat their arrows. Um, some of their mm. skills are involved coating arrows. Maybe it has something to do with that, perhaps. That was the only thing I could think of other, outside of a crafting profession. Um, and it, like you said, it's not one of the ones that we know about. Because um, that so would be they, arrows and bows, right? Like a Fletcher? Uh, yes. No. Well, I mean, it depends on the game you're talking about. Some games have separated into like bowyer is a separate thing. Um, mm. Arrow craft is a separate thing. Um, in some games, it's just woodworker does everything. That's the mm-hmm. catch-all for both of them. And we know woodworker is a crafting profession in Pantheon, or at least yep. you know the last time we heard about it. 
Um, so I don't know. I don't know. It's a good question. It, I, if I had to put money in it, I'd say it might be more related to that uh, Ranger, Ranger skill. Ability. Yeah, makes sense because we have another one like that coming up shortly. So, um, tinkering. That was not anywhere. No, nope. interesting. And I, I can't think of a class that would tie into. No, so, not me either. Off the top of my head, I can't think of anything. Uh, I always think of gnomes when I think of tinkering. <laughs> same. <laughs> not same. not pantheon. Yeah, every, everyone just put. Well, you can definitely you know, put pantheon gnomes. They're all yeah. mechanical and flying in a spaceship and stuff. Twisted pixel. Every single person just typed gnomes. It's fell in the chat. Um, interesting <laughs> because again, too long. yeah, we have we've definitely played too many MMOs. So it's interesting because tinkering was not an option. Um, in the crafting, I've not seen it mentioned anywhere. Maybe people in VIP have, or it's been in discussion pieces, but I've never seen tinkering until just now. And that would tie into like a tinkering engineering type of profession. And I don't know what that would tie into. Um, it has to be its own thing. I don't know. Somebody said maybe rogues. The reason I don't think it's rogues is because we're about to look at another rogue one coming up. So I don't know. Skinning. That's a gathering tanning that wasn't listed either. So is tanning so like kind of leather like a, working? It's, you know, this is that we saw this list more recently than we heard anything new about mm-hmm. crafting. So maybe yeah. this, you know, and again, we're all speculating here through crafting yeah, yeah. stuff. So keep that in mind. But um, maybe this is a more up to date crafting situation. Yeah, it definitely could be or it could be specialization. So it's it's, it's pretty cool um smithing blacksmithing craft of the hidden so when i read that i laughed right because it's is it code word for what they don't want us to know or is it actually craft of the hidden (laughs) like which one is it's so like obtuse like it i have no idea what this means i don't know i mean the first thing that pops in my head is like (laughs) sneak crafting (laughs) like do you can you craft special things if you're sneaking like (laughs) pads for your shoes (laughs) so yeah who knows? Like it could be, could be so quiet many different key things. rings. Um, yeah, I see. Now I could be. I, I feel like that's a code name. It has yeah. to be a code name, right? Yeah. If it's not, that's my specialty. I don't even care what it does. Yeah, Minus, what do you do? Reason, yeah. I'm a craft. I do crafting. Um, the, the next one is, in my opinion, rogue. The mixology, because if you look at rogue abilities, it says that they have different alchemaic inventions. And if you look, it's if you go to the Pantheon MMO page at the very bottom, there's like just examples. It doesn't list them all, but it just has examples of the different rogue um, alchemaic things you can do. And alchemy is already um, a thing and it's on here. So I think mixology is the special rogue one. So you might be right that rangers do the fletching. And rogues do yeah. the mix, mixology, but I really do believe that that is a rogue ability and that would make perfect sense because it was weird because if if alchemy is a profession, but then half of the rogue toolkit is this alchemic formulas, that yeah. wouldn't make any sense. And if they I change think, it, yeah. Yeah, I think you're probably you're probably right. Um, that, that does make the most sense. I like what Malsirian and I are thinking along the same lines in chat. He said bartending. Because <laughs> whenever I hear mixology, it makes me think of a bartender. So I... I think we're going to have a lot of bartenders running around Pantheon. <laughs> well, listen, um, I'm happy with and either of And it goes with drunkenness. Yeah. I'm happy with either of those. For me. Yeah. But what's right <laughs> after it? Lockpick. Lock Sometimes things are tied together. Um, bandage. Good old bandaging. How many times have you guys made the joke of healers down? Okay, who brought their bandages? Um, Nobody. Yeah. Fishing. Okay. And then this is cool. I'm going to highlight these. Let me make sure I have them all. I'm going to highlight these and make sure I have them all on the screen, which I do. Um, now, if you remember, um, right during the, was it during the stream or maybe the one before? I think it might have been this stream. They had just said that they got all the monk abilities put into the game. And you see them all here together. So my guess is that's what this is, is you're seeing a lot of the monk abilities in the game. And again, because we don't have every class fully fleshed out in the game, it's probably why this list is going to grow quite a bit or change. But we do see a lot of stuff here. Um, we have double punch, uppercut, elbow strike. Chi, that's not chill blast. That's definitely chi blast. Chi blast. High roundhouse kick, roundhouse kick, high kick. Heel snap, lunging kick, setting sun kick, rising moon kick, round kick. Flurry punch, chi mastery. I do love that you have roundhouse kick. Well, you, let's start at the beginning. You have round kick, roundhouse kick, 
high kick, high roundhouse kick. <laughs> like, cool. It's pretty cool, you know. Makes you want to play a monk. Can you like combo those? Like, which one's the Chuck Norris one? Is it the high roundhouse kick? That's got to be the <laughs> Chuck Norris kick. Oh man, I'd, it's one thing I'm not looking forward to in Pantheon is all the Chuck Norris jokes, but whatever. It may not happen. <laughs> you might be okay. Yeah, maybe. So that's a, a really nice look at your monk abilities right there. Lots of kicks. Very cool. And one Very punch. Cool. And now you have elbow strike, uppercut, double punch. Double punch is like the old Jean-Claude Van Damme move where he's like, yeah. <laughs> like in Kick slow motion there. in every movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Tutelage. Tutelage is interesting. You know, it's a word that I know what it means in like a in a roundabout sense. But if you said define it right now, I'd be like, um, well, to me, it's teacher? like the ability to teach uh, somebody something. Right. Okay. So, right. Um, you know, if you think about it, if, we're, if they are grouped from a perspective of a monk, you know, I think it would be along the lines of it's it sounds very monkish, like learning from an old master. Right. And, and then the next one underneath it is is a uh, chi mastery. Right. Yeah. Um, or I think a couple of ones down or above it, rather. Um, so that would be my guess. Learning maybe when monks are together, are they're stronger. Dude, there you go. Well, we know when the scar are together, they run faster, right? That so is in the game. Is. Yeah, it is yeah. in the game. Maybe it's the same thing. Yeah. Um, insight. That's been thrown around a lot, but I don't think it's been properly defined. Well, insight and investigate, right? So this is the perception skills. But don't um don't dark mirror have like an advantage to insight or something? And it works against the disposition, I thought. Yeah, well, they do. Yeah, all the races have some passive ability, an advantage against a certain disposition. Okay. Um, I can't remember what the Darkmare one is, but. One of them have insight, I thought. I thought maybe I'm wrong. Um, investigate. Right, right. Investigate's interesting. Yeah. Gathering is plants, I'd imagine. Mining, we know. So you have salvaging and scavenging. Salvaging, I guess, would be taking items and breaking it down. Take it easy, later. Uh, Twisted Pixels. He said he has to head out. Um, and we are going to get to that green room here very shortly, guys. We're almost done. Um, so salvaging is like breaking your item down. What is scavenging? Question. Good question. I mean, is it like foraging? <clears throat> no, I, I don't know. I don't know. Nafel probably would know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I feel like it's like... I feel like it's like foraging. I really do. Like scavenging stuff from around you to survive. It's like Maybe. vulturing stuff. Who knows? Yeah. Wood cutting, stone masonry, provisioning, woodworking, outfitting, blacksmithing, alchemy. So those are all the different things that we've talked about. So the last thing, and then we're going to go in and there is a, there's a, a reveal here. It has been revealed on one of our um, Pantheon Plus Rewinds. I don't know that everybody knows this. It was also on the forums, and I'm not trying to steal credit from the guy who did, but I don't remember his name. Um, as real. Okay. It's amazing that you figured that out and remember that. So you have health, mana, opportunity. Opportunity is the rogue resource. Um, that was brought up in a stream by Joppa that rogues weren't going to have a resource. And I think it was during the warrior stream. Um, that he's, or maybe it was the one where they were showing all the different plates. Um, rogues have a, something called opportunity. They've not talked about what it is yet, but my guess is it's something you build up from stealth and, finding opportunities to hit people. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works because I think you're still going to have, and I think they had endurance before. So, and I think they're still going to have that. And then they're also going to have opportunity. Vision is shaman. Is endurance specific or do multiple people have endurance? I, I think it's everybody has endurance. Okay. Resilience. Is, so that's the warrior. Yeah. Celestial yeah. power. Celestial power is the clerics. So, okay. yeah, I went through the classes and I looked at some of these and yeah, they're all, they're all accounted for except for a couple actually. And we'll get to that, but okay. Essence, yeah. Dire Lord. So yes, Essence is Dire Lord. Wrath. And then, then Wrath and Reckoning, the next one are both Paladin. Okay. Which is really cool. That actually ties into like what the Paladin is going to look like in Pantheon. It's not just going to be a Holy Crusader. It's a little more judgy, a little more like Reckoning, which is kind of cool. Yeah. Judgment. Fire. So, so let's battle points. We know are warrior. Warrior. Yep. Okay. So the, everyone ignore the fact that I'm highlighting battle points. This is the discovery here. So discovery in quotes. <laughs> Again, we're we're revealing in quotations here. But uh, so what wow. was interesting? Yeah. 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 So what was interesting was 
if you look at the war the wizard um, class page it talks about how they've got specializations in different schools of magic right so you've got fire uh cold um, and arcane but it also talks about a fourth uh, school of magic that's sort of mystery mysterious hasn't been discovered um and you know isn't named on the class page and when we saw this screen during the shaman screen and somebody so like what mentioned uh, we mentioned earlier ezrael uh captured this and and put it on the wizard uh form the sub form on the official forms there as essence focus saying you know because it's grouped in here with cold arcane and fire um as being potentially the fourth um the fourth uh, school of magic so it could be that it might not be somebody mentioned necromancer and it's not the first time i've heard that either too somebody else uh, brought that up which it very well could be as well but um you never know you know i, I don't think you're going to see necromancer specific stuff this early on this chart that's that's the only thing i would say and, I, and we're not really seeing any barred ones that i can see either um right. so i would assume those two aren't on there and i think if i'm not mistaken a summoner is just mana Am I wrong? Yes, summoner just uses mana. A lot of the like the druid and they a lot of them just use mana as their resource. Yeah. So um, here's what's interesting because they're using the same word twice, and that leads me to believe possibly what essence focus means, which is an interesting thing if if it is. So they use essence already. Why would they use the same name? Essence for a dire lord is about blood. The you drain the essence it's like blood magic is it possible that we're talking about the wizard's fourth school being like a blood mage because that ah, there you go would be cool go. that would be That's really nice. sick now I again it's it. right and and that mm -hmm. is something that i it's you know that's a fantasy thing a blood mage is a thing so it, is a blood mage going to be or a blood wizard going to be the, the fourth school because that would be really neat i just don't see why would they use the same word Right. Yeah. Good point. So, you know what? Uh, so, which uh, there's one that's missing from here, and it breaks my heart. But uh, momentum is the uh, ranger resource, or at least it had, was. Well, yeah, they talked about it. getting rid of that, right? Mm -hmm. So, so it's not listed there. So, they're obviously, you know, obviously, again, this list is speculative, but uh, yeah, uh, interesting to see what they're doing with that. Yeah. So, Interesting. Interesting. Yes. So, uh, Hurricane, what they what the way it works is as you cast that school of magic, you gain essence, and what it does is it increases the potency at some kind of cost of that line. So, if you're casting fire and fire and fire, your mana cost is going up, but your damage is going up, um, and it's different for each one. You know, uh, arcane as you're casting it, it's going to give you more mana back, or you're going to get more mana generation. Uh, cold is going to be more CC driven. Um, so there's, there's, uh, different aspects of what they do. So essence focus is pretty interesting to, that could, that could be really cool. And that might hold over some necromancers. <laughs> well, they wait if it doesn't come out. If um, I can't play a necro, I can be a blood mage at least. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. It's really interesting. And I'd love to see how that plays out. We, again, complete speculation, but it would make a lot of sense. Um, so that's it. Um, that was a lot. Um, that was an hour and 20 minutes of us talking through these. Um, everybody stuck around. I love you for that. Let's get into the green room and hear what these guys have to say. And, um, don't forget to vote. We only have 10 votes and we have had over 30 people in here most of the night. So if you haven't voted exclamation point, vote space, love vote space, different vote space. hate. Um, and the question is, what are your feelings on deep sets? Let's grab Drac. Drac, you are first and we will then grab old war goat and then Hoye to close up the show. So Drac, we're bringing you in now. What's up, Drac? How are you? I'm doing fantastic. So long show. I apologize for making you wait so long. Um, but I know that you were into this earlier in the day. Drac messaged me and said, hey, get any of that deep stat stuff that you've been working on? I'd love to see it ahead of time. So Drac, I'm excited to hear what are some of your thoughts? Did we cover some of them? Did you have some extra things you wanted to add? What are your thoughts on deep stat? I'm giving you the floor now. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I was really crushed about the whole uh, planar uh, <laughs> stuff because I was all the way down the trail of it being planar weapons and that planes were confirmed. So <laughs> that is just funny. I'm sorry to, to speculatively crush your dream. <laughs> but I think you're right on with it. And uh, yeah, so that, that was heartbreaking. But... Uh, I love all the different weapon types. There's more weapon types than I thought was 
were was ever going to be there. Mm-hmm. Um, the pole arms, the pole weapons, I thought was really cool. The the short bow and the long bow um, for like so maybe like short bows for rain or for rogues and and like long bows for rangers or different types of rangers. Maybe there's a short bow ranger mm-hmm. set and a long bow ranger set. I thought that was really um, yeah. interesting. Um, and then of course the writing um, for the kind of like you said it kind of confirms the mounts i thought that was super interesting because they uh they've asked a lot of questions about mounts but i don't think they've ever really come out and said that mounts are going to be in the game from the start no i don't think they've said that i can't recall that but it's uh it's interesting because it means you know if you are using a mount or if you're riding you know over time that maybe that skill gets better and better right yeah right um i thought uh tutelage i thought that could possibly be like the mentor system like if you're grouping with lower level people maybe that skills up your tutelage skill and then you're better at uh grouping with lower level people or you get more experience for grouping with lower level people Hmm. that would be interesting if that was a system that you actually had to level thank you for the follow kinan yeah if you had to (laughs) it would be it would be another layer to that system and something people would actually want to level up, I guess. It wouldn't be a bad idea. It'd be different. It'd be very different to have it a stat. And then, of course... Oh, I was going to say, and then, of course, all the stuff, all the crafting stuff that wasn't in the game, the tinkering, the fletching, the salvaging. They haven't said anything about salvaging before. Um, Are we going to be able to break down all our old weapons into pieces? Um, and stuff and use it for other stuff. That's that's super interesting. I don't think they I think they have very briefly talked about that. And it was in what was the discussion? I think it might have been a Q&A after a stream where Joppa was talking about like what to do with old weapons where you'd either, you know, trade it in in a quest or sell it or scavenge it for pieces or parts to do something else with it. So it was it was very, very briefly mentioned as a way to keep the market from overflowing with items that specifically um, since the game has mostly tradable items, right? um, They can't have them all just live forever. So you just have overflow eventually, right? Like if there was a fungi tunic and everyone eventually got it, there would just be a million fungi tunics, right? So it's, uh, it's kind of interesting how that all goes. So yeah, I don't know. Um, I got down here pickpocket. Um, that's in the, some games, but like, I feel like that's also one that's always like nerfed to the ground because it's always over overpowered. So much rogue stuff. So much rogue stuff is like that. Picklocks. Well, now we're making it so you have to have a rogue. So let's get rid of picklocks. Or, or you know, disarm traps. Oh well, now we're making it so you have to have a rogue. Let's get rid of disarm traps. Oh, pickpocket's too powerful for rogues. Let's get every game. Please, please, BR, allow a rogue to be a rogue. If someone didn't play a rogue, that's their own damn fault. They played a ranger. They get to hang out with animals in the woods. That's they do. I you've pick made pocket. your choices. Yeah, you've you've made your choice. But you're Drac. You hit the nail on the head, man. Those things get nerfed all the time. So. Yeah, yeah, and cool. then uh, yeah, and then of course the last thing is the four. The four types of wizard magic. I, I didn't put together the the blood mage or the blood wizard, but yeah, the essence is pretty cool. Be cool, and it's a hidden. So think about it. So it makes sense. It re- like we can make as much sense out of it as we want if we want it to be the case, right? We can make up stories like crazy, but it ties into the dire lord and it's hidden. Blood magic would be a hidden sort of. If you're a wizard, you know this isn't the way you want to go. This is kind of dark. You know you're usually in the elements, but now you're going into this essence so it should be hidden in the world you have to go learn it from somebody out in the wilderness not around towns and stuff like that kind of like that right also it gives your uh avenue for specifically an evil caster if the necromancer is not going to make it in the game yep right very cool a fun quest whatever you have to do to become a blood wizard would be a fun quest i don't care what <laughs> they do it can't not be a fun quest so i think you just kill a bunch of elves i think yeah Oh, no, don't do that. <laughs> Track anything else? No, that's all I had. Awesome, man. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for sticking around. Thanks for hyping up the green room for us. And uh, good stuff, man. 
I love it. I love it. It's fun when you can get excited about this kind of stuff. I know we're all wanting more and more info, but there was a lot of info here. And it's funny because I haven't seen any videos made of it, like from us and the crew, including us. So when I started to say, like, we need to dig into this and think about it, VR even said, hey, what do you guys think of those deep stats? Like, like nudge, nudge. There's things in here, guys. <laughs> like We showed you something on purpose. A bag of beans and you're not eating them. What's wrong with you people? <laughs> Yeah. So, I so love true. diving into this chat. It was super fun. Uh, thanks for having me on. Thanks, man. Take it easy. See you, Drac. All right. So we'll grab War Goat and then Hoye after that to finish up the show. Old War Goat. How are you, buddy? Pretty good. How's everyone doing tonight? Doing good, man. Doing good. So, what do you think of this kind of stuff? I am. This is interesting. This is giving us a big glimpse into what could, what is possibly in the game currently that they're developing and what's yet to come. So, yeah, I know all the theory crafters are nuts right now. Think coming through this. Yeah, like what can it mean? What is this? What am I going to be able to do with this? Like, oh, this confirms something I love, or oh no, this confirms something I hate. So. Yeah. Just asked me if I wanted to co-host. I was like, hmm, theory crafting and wild speculation? Yeah, I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we definitely. So there's some things I'm looking over at still, and I'm like, hmm. now the can't turn thing, I I was taking it from a different point of view as not from a ranger trap. I was thinking of taking it more along the lines of a cleric mm. as per their turning on dead ability. Maybe the undead's too strong for them to turn. They can't turn it. Very good. That's point. actually a really Didn't good point. Yeah. Look at that. I never, I always forget that the turning of undead like is a thing. Right. So, I mean, I guess it would be like a, you know, maybe just a, a, a value. It might be an on and off, on or off thing, or maybe a value where it's really high. If you've got like a, you know, a boss in a dungeon, a, a named mob and they're undead. You know, you've got your cleric in the group and you're just been turning left and right, you know, turning undead left and right. And you come to that boss and it's like, like nope, don't do that. Yeah, not not here. Can't do that. No, can't turn. I'm sorry. It's too strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's a good call, man. Yeah, that and also the um, invocation, exvocation you were talking about earlier. Uh, exvocation, if you're taking it from the DD sets, is more along the lines of fireballs, lightning bolts stuff like that stuff that's external okay like you're you're manipulating the 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 elements themselves where invocation is more along the lines of cleric as they're beseeching their gods to beseech them mm. to grant them their powers for a day so for it's almost like blessings and stuff yeah so exactly okay that makes more sense and for the forging in the forging in scavenging well for me, from a survival standpoint, foraging is more of along the lines of gathering stuff within a wilderness environment. Um, while scavenging is more like, you know, it could be taken either one way, like breaking down weapons or scavenging through a building dungeon or or sure. or city looking for... That would items. actually be really cool ability to have if you're going through like old dungeons and you're like scavenging in corners and stuff and finding like items for crafting or upgrading and stuff that could be that could be pretty neat and uh also on top of that me being a big monk monk fan uh i saw the monk abilities and i was like yes yeah a lot of monk <laughs> abilities here yeah now that, a lot of monk love. now my theory on the key blocking I, I i do have this the the key blocking um or key of it however you want to say it yeah. but um I'm thinking that you know, since a monk does have a does have a bar, a, a chakra bar, maybe that if they use that to block the your chakra meter goes down, they use a portion of your chakra to block the attack, okay. something yeah. like that. Yep. So it sort of works like the chi and the chakra are sort of inverse, right? So you build up because the way it's described in the class page for monks is they build up chakra as their resource and it opens these like gates right it opens different abilities open up as the chakra builds up so you're saying like the chi blocking is the sort of the counter to that the spend um, yeah the spend sort of resource maybe yeah instead of using it maybe you have the option of okay instead of using an ability i have to block this because i'm off tanking something okay block 
use use the use the uh, key use the key block to to block the attack. And I think Chi Blast, and, which is the other Chi thing we see on here, was like a really high damaging ability, but it costs all your stuff. So like you kind of said, there, like you build up to get your chakra up and then open these gates, but you could either use it to be defensive or you can use it to do a really big blast or you can maintain it and use all your other abilities. It's like a balance yin and yang. Yeah. Also looking at, also looking at that too, as well, all the kicks as well. Oh my God. I can think of so many things I can do with that. I hope the animations are good. Just kicking all over the damn place. High kick. That's what Roundhouse kick, month. high roundhouse Four. kick, round kick, flying kick, heel snap, lunging kick, sun kick, moon kick, Phew. two punches. Monks are like, eh, I'm going to use these fists when I have to. <laughs> monks like punching and kicking things. That's, a, that's the best thing about monks. It just, you know, if, they, if, if you can't punch it, you kick it. If you can't kick it, you punch it. I guess so. There you go. Kick some ass. All right, man. Anything else for us before we jump over to Hoye? No, I'm good. You, you gentlemen have a good night. Awesome. Man. We're going to take it back. easy, man. All right. We're going to bring Hoye in to close up the show. And uh, for those that don't know, Hoye here. Big day today. Big number. Big number. Happy birthday, Hoye. How are you? Good, man. Been drinking at all? Good, what's going on? You hanging out? What's What's the deal here? How'd we yeah, get you on your uh, birthday? Yeah, I'm a... Uh... I've had quite a few. It's been it's been good. All right. I'm sure um, numbers yeah. then are fantastic when you like all these numbers and stats while you're drinking is probably amazing. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. Uh, it's a intoxication stat, stat is really uh, inflated <laughs> right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's good, man. It's the uh, the whole uh, COVID stuff. So we didn't really do much. We had uh, yeah. my in laws here, which are damn near as good as my parents. So. And uh, that was pretty much it. We had a couple friends, but, you know, wrapped up early, you know, trying to keep it small, Keep safe. So. Yeah, I hear you. So I was able to sneak away for a little bit. I, uh, everybody left, and I was like, ooh, what time is it? Hey, let me uh, catch you into this show. So what are your thoughts on all these things, man? I mean, is there anything that stood out to you or any discoveries you agree with, disagree with, or just anything that you, you kind of listen to? You know, I didn't. I I really haven't had time to really go through all of the stats mm-hmm. and look for any or you know anything cool like that. Um, I do like a lot of stats. So I do like having a lot of it. Um, and keep in mind, a lot of people are looking at these stats and be like, "Oh my god, that's way too many." Well, yeah, half of these stats you won't ever even see as you know playing a warrior, or playing a mage, or mm-hmm. something like that. There's class specific. So I don't know if you touched on that already or not, yep. but. Uh, so I mean, it's it, there will be a lot more stats. It looks like than uh, some of the other games out there, um, and I do like that. Uh, but I don't think it's going to be overwhelming. I do think they need to be careful as far as uh, future expansions go that they don't you know keep adding on more and more, so that if a new player joins the game three or four years after it launches, they're not completely overwhelmed. Um, but I think more stats is good. Yeah, and that's where you see a lot of games have crunched their stats down. And we kind of talked about that a little bit with like, um, if you look in the the blue column here on the screen, um, let's see, right here you have, you know, physical crit and spell crit as two different capabilities, right? And there's classes that will use both of those. Um, a druid might go in for physical damage every once in a while. It's probably going to be more casting, obviously. Or even a cleric might walk right. in and, and be in there, right? So it's interesting that some classes will have to decide, you know, on the stat. Now, does is we don't know do you just get crit and it goes into them and if you're a spellcaster you get more of a bonus to it where you have less of a bonus to physical so it doesn't mean that you necessarily have to get items that say 10 spell crit or 10 10 physical crit you might get crit um and then depending on your class it breaks into those categories differently as possible or they could break it up completely but in wow for example they went they got rid of that that was a stat that they had i think during lich king and then when they condensed everything um it just became crit so yeah i'm not a fan of that i i, I like having more it it just yeah. it makes gear matter more i mean you could have so for example you could have a gear that as far as the stats it's a piece of crap mm-hmm. but it just happens to have one of those these stats up here that you see that you normally don't see like a 
uh, in EQ2, we called them blue stats because they were kind of rare. Mm-hmm. Um, they weren't your normal main stats, but it could have, you know, plus 10 spell crit, and that was huge. Um, I think WoW actually had that too, actually. For a little um, bit, yep. Yeah, so, um, and, you know, that makes that, that item really valuable. Yeah. So I like that. Agreed, and then there's certain things like hit and defense that you have to hit a certain level, or you're, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to get crit. You know, whereas if your defense is high enough, you'll take no crit damage, um, which is huge for a tank. Um, and then for hit is like a rogue. You know, if we're going to fight an enemy that's two or three levels higher than me and my hit's not capped, I'm going to miss. And if I miss, that's a huge DPS loss. And that's also huge for like a warrior. Like you could miss a taunt. Like if you don't have enough hit, you may not be able to connect your taunt. And I remember that back in the in the beginning of the WoW days. And that was that was rough if you weren't hit capped as a tank. And uh, another thing I was thinking about, too, is that, uh, I should have just slipped my mind. Um, Oh, so like a lot of these things um, with uh, stats that could possibly, um, what is it called? Uh, Soft cap, I believe Mm -hmm. is what they call it, to where it doesn't actually physically hard cap, but it soft caps where you start losing uh, gains on it. Like diminishing returns. Yep, yep. Right. Um, At some point, it's better just to pick up some of these extra uh, stats here, whether they're from adornments or gems or whatever you want to call them, uh, to to beef those up and get your other stats from, like, uh, buffs or whatever. Like, if you're in a raid, especially as a main tank, you know you're going to get stam buffs out the ass. So (laughs) you can can pick up on stuff like defense or parry and stuff. Um, And I love that kind of stuff. I knew uh, when I was in EQ2, I was a main tank as a monk. And I knew I was gonna. I knew my group. I knew every buff I was gonna have, and I knew everything to where I would make. I would uh, change up all my stuff to where I had like, you know, hardly no stamina and all this stuff because I would be maxed out almost as high as yeah. I could get. But I could also put all this stuff into like avoidance to where I was actually sitting at ninety percent avoidance going into a raid and almost capped out on all my stamina and everything Jeez. else because I could. I could play around with the. Uh, uh, the stats and everything. Yeah, and that's I actually so made fun to me. Over a, uh, over a warrior. That's so fun to me too. Is like playing with different stats and finding out that like, wow, like, wait, this works. Like, holy cow, right? Um, would you think before we go? I'm curious. Would you think of how all the weapons are laid out? Did you catch that? It, it's weird. Uh, it's, I it's awkward. A little bit. So, so um, what are you talking about specifically? So, if you look at the ability stats that we have up on the board, you'll see my mouse here. We have. This all these weapons here, right? Um, and and it's weird because we have one and two-handed sword, one and two-handed blunt, one and two-handed piercing, and then we have one and two-handed edged, which is weird because you would almost think like you can get rid of sword if you just have edged, right? I get that there's different types of weapons that are edged, but it's weird. And then you have axes special, like those could be edged. Um, and then you don't have like dagger, right? But you have sword. Um it's it's interesting because then you look at the side beside it here, you have pull weapons, staves, like you get a little more specific. So it's weird because there's these instances of specific types of weapons. And then there's these instances of, of like groups of weapons. And it seems a little weird because we talked to that halflings, they are no, they are plus five or 10 to daggers or something. Um, and there's no actual dagger on here. Interesting. I, man, if I took a guess, so EG2 had almost that exact same setup, uh, set up in the, Ability stats column to the left, the first one, mm-hmm. with a one-handed sword, blunt, piercing. Instead of edge, they had slash. Okay. Um, pretty much the same thing, though. I wonder if these two actually parry off each other. So the formula would look something like, um, uh, you know, your your uh, long or your um, quarter staff times whatever it would match on the blunt. So quarter staff times two-handed blunt equals damage output, something like that. Or maybe like if you're using a dagger, you're leveling piercing and dagger. But if you switch to a rapier, you're still going to have some backing of the piercing, but you're going to have to level rapier. Like it's, it's weird. Possibly, possibly something. That is definitely weird. Um, I would, I'd, I'd be willing to bet that they have some kind of correlation as far as how they're formulated. Yeah. And, and it's also, you know, this isn't finalized. That's what we've been saying all night. Who knows what this is going to change into or what they're doing right now. But there is a pretty interesting um you know we're all kind of wondering what what are weapons going to look like <laughs> it's strange yeah. so i'm really i'm really uh eager to see how tonic or aggro is going to work too yep i hope do you like snap aggro or like if you're the first person that's in you gain more do you like that 
Uh, no, I like. So in Iki two, they I think they did it really well. They had um, when you taunted something, it was like a like a number, mm -hmm. so like a damage number. So it was kind of a fight to to keep, to keep um, it. yeah, to keep it. So we're like, you know, I may taunt for two thousand, but you know, DPS they may be worth like you know a hundred DPS or something. So I had to keep <laughs> keep it up. And also, it was really fun for other tanks, like an off tank, because yeah. I had to continue to taunt to make sure I was number two or number, number two three on there. Yeah. So that if you know something happened, our main tank went down, I had to be really close up there. See, so I'm a, I'm a big fan of the first to engage aggro because when you're running in and that ranger in the back decides he's going to pull his arrow and shoot before you get there, and he hits him before you do, it runs and kills the ranger real quick, which is you know we know that's how they roll. Um, and then you get your aggro. See, that's why I like that initial aggro. If someone doesn't wait for the tank, they die. So. And see, I think I think a part of that needs to play into how aggro and all that works too. Because I mean, there's got to be some kind of mechanism to where it, you have to be thoughtful. You can't do dumb stuff yeah. like that. You know, yeah. I was I was a king of throwing up a parse uh, when we went to go pull a raid mom and some asshole wizard <laughs> threw an ice comet on the pool. Like literally, you could see the uh, you could see the uh, the time of the fight and it would be like three seconds and you knew an ice comet took five seconds to parse or to cast you know <laughs> yeah. so i'd be like oh yeah while we're all running back there let me throw up this uh three second parse and oh we got uh twiddle fingers up there for four thousand damage with an ice comet yeah that was such there, a buddy. warlock thing in um oh my god warlocks and wow you had that big spell you'd prep up before you went in yeah well awesome man happy birthday happy big three zero Man, it's a big 29, one. man. I was born in 91. What are you talking about? <laughs> apparently, apparently to Nathan, uh, I'm a boomer now. There you go. That out there. Apparently, we're all boomers. Yeah, everybody is. If you <laughs> don't agree. That. Yeah, did you see that? Oh, it's good. The pictures. Yeah. Uh, who would have thought we'd have two music videos completely randomly on the same night for a game in pre-alpha? That's unexpected, I think. <laughs> um, Hoye, happy birthday, man. Thanks for being part of the show. And uh, thanks for your feedback tonight. Yes. Appreciate it, buddy. Well, Theric, that wraps it up for us. We just went through 7,000 stats. Um, we actually had people stay to listen and contribute chat. You guys have been awesome. Um, so thank you guys for contributing and answering some of our questions because this is a lot to process. Um, I'm get confused on like basic things I should know because I'm digging so deep and everything else. But there's a lot here. There's things to learn. We look and we see possibly um, the fleshing out of the crafting system we see a little bit better. Um, we see maybe the fleshing out of what's possible for the wizard. Um, we see a lot of the monk abilities. Um, we see a lot about weapons. Um, so there's a lot of really cool things that are here. And if you uh, wanted to look at this in more detail, we did tweet out this image, the full image. Um, we tweeted it out to uh, on our Twitter. So you can go and download that image if you really want to look it over. We try to keep it all organized. A couple things are misspelled, and I think I had to delete a double in the one area. But other than that, it's pretty useful. So, Derek, what'd you think? This I know you're not a big math guy, but... No, you know what? I, I know. And I, I kind of when I first started thinking about this, I'm like, oh, no, stats. I don't like stats. I don't want to do statistics. But you know what? That's not what this is about. Mm -hmm. This was about using our imaginations, about being creative and being, you know, coming up with random explanations for things that may or may, may, or may not exist or, or may or may not be the way it actually is. So it was a lot of fun for me because I love that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I had tons of fun. Well, like I said, guys, you heard it here first. Pantheon plus you exclusive um planers weapons planer weapons are for summoned pets eh? or at least summoned uh, weapons. we're gonna get a tweet from vr tomorrow saying no that's not what it is <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well thank you for another amazing show thank you for sticking a little bit longer with us tonight and thanks to everybody we didn't get a chance to say thank you to individually in the chat um battle axe mako i don't think we got to say thanks for jumping in but there's a few more um, thank you to everybody who followed us and was part of this and we will see you guys next week. And, uh, by the way, don't forget to check out our music video. Cause, uh, put a lot of time into that. It was a lot of fun. Um, yes, it was, it was a lot of fun. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, we did a parody video of green days, long view called log weight. Um, and all I'll say is it is completely stuck in my head. Take me away to Pantheon minus in the boys. Take it easy guys. All right.